Our uh, next talk is being given by Jurgen Michael, Senior Research Associate at MIT. He will be talking about germanium EAA modulators, commercial deployment and future. Jurgen Michael is a senior research scientist in the Microphotonic Center and a senior lecturer in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at MIT. Prior to joining MIT in 1991, he was postdoctoral member of technical staff at at and Bell Lab. He was educated in Germany and earned his diploma in physics at the University of Cologne and his doctorate and habilitation in applied physics at University of Paderborn. He is currently serving as an associate editor for the Photonics Research Journal and SPIE Photonics First short course instructor. Let's welcome Jürgen Michael once again. Thank you very much. So um, Kim asked me to uh, uh, talk about germanium electroabsorption modulators and uh, the commercial deployment. Now, Graham already uh, took a lot of uh, the most recent uh, developments um, and, and talked about them. But uh, what I want to do is actually go back to history, like Graham did. Uh, you know, where where did we come from? And and so, uh, uh, most interestingly, um, if we go to the now, I have to look. First slide. Here we go. Um, so, um, uh, actually, it's quite interesting. Um, it, it actually uh, uh, is based on work in two labs, I would say. One is Graham's, one is our, at MIT. Graham provided um, uh, one of his first uh, grad students who started a couple of companies, and, and actually that seeded uh, eventually a commercial interest in uh, germanium electroabsorption modulators, and uh, we at MIT provided just the modulators. So, uh, so, so uh, I want to talk about um, briefly Mellanox. Now, Mellanox uh, is certainly not a spin-off uh, from Graham's group, but um, it actually is a spin-off, or it it, uh, it it came from Bookham through Kotura, the technology to Mellanox. So. So Mellanox actually bought uh, from Kotura the germanium uh, electroabsorption modulator technology, and they're using it. So, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, also, Rockley um, uh, Photonics um, uh, announced, I don't know announced, but uh, they, they certainly disclosed that they're using germanium electroabsorption modulators, and I think um, they, they expect to, to um, to, um, to have product uh, by the end of the year. Uh, Graham probably knows more than I do uh, about those. <clears throat> and then the last one is iMac, and uh, Graham may mentioned the latest results on 100 uh, gigabit per second uh, electroabsorption modulators um, from iMac. So uh, just to move forward, this is uh, here uh, the website from Mellanox. So you can go online, see it, and what they say here is um, they're using uh, 30 gigahertz uh, germanium electroabsorption modulators that are integrated in a three uh, micron silicon and insulator waveguide. And these are kind of based on the Bookham um, waveguides. Uh, you actually saw that in the, in the early modulators, uh, the rich waveguide-based materials. And, and so Mellanox, as well as... Um, uh, as um, uh, Rockley uh, Photonics, they're using these large, um, 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 uh, these large waveguides. Now, uh, uh, if you go a little bit further, uh, the website actually explains why uh, they use those modulators. And so, so they're, they're really, the constraints here, uh, drive voltage has to be CMOS compatible. Uh, the modulator uh, has to uh, exhibit uh, an extinction ratio uh, that, that is good enough for 25G in their case. It has to be low power, um, of course, uh, should work over a fairly broad spectrum of light, and also uh, has to be small. And so that's why they decided on a germanium uh, electroabsorption modulator uh, that's driven by the Franz Keldisch effect. So, um, and, and uh, so, so uh, actually the work that we did, and, and just a few words about electroabsorption modulators. As Graham mentioned before, they're really very low power devices because you don't have to inject carriers. You just move charge. And that can be done much faster at much less power. And essentially, it, it explains it here. This is uh, essentially the direct band gap of germanium. We ignore the indirect band gap of germanium here because uh, this essentially uh, ad just adds uh, to, the, um, to, the, um, uh, to the insertion loss. So it's kind of a loss 
that's there. But uh, we are very interested in the direct band gap. And so what you do is when you apply uh, a, a voltage here, you, you actually bend the bands. And so if you look at the overlap of your wave functions here, uh, you see actually as you apply a higher voltage, you have a much higher overlap. That means that you actually get absorption. And so uh, in our early uh, estimates, uh, we projected that you get above 50 gigahertz uh, uh, for those electroabsorption modulators and also that you get to very low power consumptions. And so um, we predicted well above 50 gigahertz. Uh, we know now that we are probably at 80 gigahertz or so. And so this is uh, really encouraging. And uh, this is uh, probably one of those uh, modulators that's still um, CMOS compatible where you can actually go to that high speeds. So what we did uh, at the time, we actually choose a butt coupled design. So we have here, we coupled from a silicon, crystalline silicon waveguide to uh, a, poly, uh, a polysilicon waveguide, and then butt coupled into our germanium uh, electroabsorption modulators. And, and I think this is, this is the most tricky part that uh, people have to uh, solve in the design, is to actually keep the insertion loss low. And, um, and so the coupling loss uh, is, uh, is given here in, in our design at about 1.7 dB. Uh, the indirect band gap loss is, is about 2 dB. And that, of course, depends on the wavelength. So this is for 1550 nanometers. And so you see here, uh, this is uh, what, what we then uh, simulated. And so uh, we have a good, very good coupling in and out of the uh, modulator. So, so actually, I should say here, we added uh, less than a percent of silicon uh, to the germanium in order to shift the band gap to that we can actually then have 1550 um, um, uh, uh, operation uh, wavelengths. And so you see here, I uh, just want to talk about this uh, center graph here. So you see here, this is extinction ratio and insertion loss versus wavelengths. And so you see here, um, you, you have here uh, at about 1550, you have the onset of the direct band gap. So then you get more absorption. Uh, you, you, you get actually very good extinction ratio uh, at about uh, 1540 or below. This is uh, about 10 dB. But, but really in this working regime uh, uh, of what we said, about 14 uh, uh, nanometers, you have about 8 dB of extinction ratio. If you allow a smaller extinction ratio, of course, then you have a larger working regime. So, so what we, what we then did, we actually processed and made those. Actually, they were, they were done uh, at uh, the BAE fab in Manassas. Um, and so unfortunately, we only got 3 dB uh, frequency of about 1.2 gigahertz. And the reason was just uh, that, that we had a process step that, was, uh, that, was, that didn't work. So we have a very large CS resistance. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, the, the devices worked as, expense, uh, as expected, so we have a very small capacitance. The capacitance was 11 femtofarad. And, and this is kind of what you expect for this type of devices. It's, it's essentially capacitance limited, and that's also what limits, uh, limits your performance in, in speed and also uh, uh, drives the power consumption. So here is now, uh, this is uh, what I took from literature. I don't have the latest data, so this is the IMEC approach. Um, I should go back, actually, just quickly and point out that what we did in our design, we had a top to bottom uh, uh, EA modulator. So we have on the top N-type, because uh, the, the N-type dopants uh, diffuse very fast through germanium. So we have P-type on the bottom, slow di diffusers and then N-type on the bottom, so it's very easy to activate those. You see in the iMac uh, design, uh, they have now uh, a PNN on both sides. Uh, that uh, reduces somewhat the, um, the, um, the dark current because threading dislocations go this way. You have no threading dislocations going this way. Uh, it may make uh, the processing a little bit more complex. But uh, you see here on the right, so uh, they easily get up to uh, 50 gigahertz. And, and these devices probably even went further. Uh, but they also, they couldn't measure. I think that's one of the big problems. Go to 100 gigahertz, and it's very, very difficult to measure those, uh, those um, uh, frequencies. The other approach, and that's now Couture's approach. So uh, here an example of a Couture's device. So they have these very large, rich waveguides. Uh, they're very low loss, and they're coupled into a germanium modulator. 
uh, they, uh, uh, similar to IMAC, uh, they actually have site-to-site uh, uh, -site, uh, contacts, uh, PNN here in the germanium, and, and for those devices, they went uh, above uh, 30 gigahertz as well. Uh, you, you, the, the power consumption is, of course, higher because the capacitance of those devices is higher because they're just larger. So to look at an overview, and this is uh, uh, an iMac paper. Um, so this work is actually, this is the iMac work, uh, uh, and, and uh, the same devices as I showed you before from iMac. Um, you see here uh, the... Um, Franz Keldisch, uh, the, the number one, uh, number seven, this is our MIT device, and you see actually, if you now look at uh, the performance here in terms of capacitance, they're identical because they're essentially the same size. The swing voltage is very similar. Again, it's, it's material given, um, and, and so is the footprint, so they have a smaller footprint that uh, translates to a smaller uh, capacitance, and then you see here the Extinction ratio, we have a high extinction ratio, but that also is a trade-off. You trade off uh, um, uh, the, the uh, extinction ratio and the, the, the bandwidth, the optical bandwidth. So if you have a larger bandwidth, you have to, have, uh, to, you have to, have to go to a lower extinction ratio. But, but essentially, this is all material given, and uh, there's not much you can do. So um, the outlook. So um, it's quite encouraging, so we know Mellanox already has those germanium electroabsorption modulators in production for actually several years. Um, additional companies are moving to, uh, to put germanium modulators into product. And uh, with the iMac platform, uh, you can actually now uh, run multi-process wafers uh, with germanium modulators. And so uh, I know that research institutes do that already. And I'm sure companies do that. So, so then the question is, where do we go here? Uh, it's, uh, I, I think it's quite interesting that um, companies have now embrace, uh, uh, embraced uh, germanium electroabsorption modulators because um, the, the standard was silicon Marsena modulators, and then the upcoming challenge was really silicon ring modulators. Apparently, germanium has uh, quite a bit to offer uh, that, that makes them very attractive. And so the question is, where can we go from here? So um, I just want to put that up here because we have designs that, that, that actually go above 500 gigahertz. It gets actually very close to terahertz. So germanium has still a lot way to go. What we just need is funding. And, and that's the only thing we need to get to these 500 gigahertz. And with that, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jürgen. It was a nice talk. One quick comment is uh, the iMac germanium is uh, with 10% silicon in it. Um, it they, yeah, so I don't know how much silicon they have in there. Uh, they, they have to put a few percent silicon in there in, in, the, uh, in, in order to shift the band shift so that band. you actually get to... I don't know what wavelengths they have here. Uh, I didn't closely look, but they're, they're actually, this is 100% germanium, where you see you get out to 1630, right? So uh, that's why we put 0.7% silicon into our germanium to just shift the direct band gap to where we want to have it. Uh, any additional questions? Okay, let's uh, thank Jürgen once again.